Now I want to start off with a question. I would love to hear your feedback on. When you go to the bookstore, what is the biggest section of books in a bookstore? Say Barnes and Noble. What do you think is the biggest section of books? Fiction. Okay. Somebody else have another, another opinion? Kids. Kids. At, you know, you might be onto it. They got a huge section of books. Here's the biggest. Here's the answer. Self-help. Self-help is the biggest section in a bookstore. Now, self-help, if you don't know what that is, it's uh, books written on how you can better yourself, how you can start a business, stuff like that. Um, they're based on you kind of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and making things happen. Now, a lot of that's good. A lot of it's real practical and helpful. Um, so don't hear me wrong, but here's a problem when it comes to Christianity. I think um, because there's such an emphasis in our day on self-help, um, we have this do-it-yourself mentality, and that's carried over into the way we worship, uh, how we live out our faith, and the like. And here's what I mean. When you have a question about Christianity, where do you typically go? Google, on average. If you want to worship and sing a song, where do you go? Spotify or YouTube. <laughs> when you um, have a prayer request, if you share it at all, where might you share it? On social media, if you share it at all. When we want a sermon, where do we go? Find it online. Who's the best speaker? Who do I enjoy listening to? Find it online. But rarely do we ever go to the church for these things. And God made the church for these things. So here's the main thing I want you to hear today. If you don't hear anything else, is I want you to find a church. I want you to find a church because post 2020, we have gotten more disconnected as a culture than we ever have in the past when it comes to church, when it comes to living out our faith uh, in the way that God desires us to. So finding a church in the New Testament, many of the letters, all of the letters actually written by Paul and Peter and James and John, these are all disciples of Jesus. They were written to churches, local churches. The book of Revelation, you know how it starts? Jesus is calling out and lovingly speaking to churches. So the church is important. The church is God's desire for Christians as we gather together around the preaching, around worship, and around loving one another. That's God's heart is for us to be plugged into a church. So I don't want to just say this as a guy that's a staff member, but I want to see it in God's word. So let's look up on the screen here. And can I get two volunteers, uh, one volunteer to read from and down to schemes and then the other volunteer from the word rather down to love so first volunteer and to schemes you'll stop on the word schemes yeah it's good so here's what's going on in verses 11 through 12 so starting in and and i believe ending uh on christ um in those verses what i want you to see there is that here's a summary in the church, God has chosen leaders to equip believers who, guess what? Equip believers. Leaders who equip believers to equip believers. That's God's heart. So you see the list up there. It says apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers to do what? What's the word? Equip. Equip the who? The saints. The saints. Now, is that somebody that's floating around on air with a little halo playing a harp? No, no. Who's the saints? Christians, believers, anyone who's received the gospel and is following Jesus is a saint in Christ. Jesus has saved you, and we're all on our journey, right? Some have just started. Some have been doing this for a long time. But you are a saint if you believe the gospel, which is believing who Jesus is. The saints for the work of ministry. What's the work of ministry? Is that just, do, do what again? Spreading the word. Spreading the word. Yeah, ministry is spreading the word. What else is ministry? Serving people. What else is ministry? Praying for someone. You have a thought, Casey? No, I was going to say just that. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are things that are ministry. So is it just a staff person with a name tag that's a minister? No, no. It's, it's anybody who's a believer. The saints for the work of ministry, for building up of the body of Christ. This is important here. The body of Christ, the church, is people who belong to Jesus. This is why it's called the body of Christ. And each of you in here, I don't know if you know this, you have a spiritual gift. 
God has given each of you who are believers the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gives you different gifts to use. And I say this a lot to our students. If you don't use your spiritual gift and it sits dormant, it's going to be harder for you to utilize that 10 years down the road from now. Use the gift God's given you. So maybe you're inclined to teach the Bible. Maybe you're inclined to share the gospel with somebody at school. Maybe you're inclined to uh, be someone who's hospitable. You see a stranger and you know how to put your arm around them and lead them to Jesus and show love to them. These are different spiritual gifts. And each person has been given a gift if you're a believer. And it says, till we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood. That's the goal, to mature so, in the church, God's chosen leaders to equip the believers so they can equip believers. Here's another easy way to remember this. Leaders equip leaders who equip, guess the word, leaders. Yeah, easy way. It's three times. Leaders who equip leaders who equip leaders. These people, apostles, prophets, evangelists, basically, you got your pastors, you got people that lead Bible studies, you have people who have a heart to share the gospel. Those people are equipping you so that you can do the ministry. So you can help equip others. That's the goal. But here, here's what happens a lot of times we see church as this. We see church as a big buffet where you see all the things they have for you and how they can provide for things you want. And then you're just, you, you're just basically spiritually fat and happy. You're sitting there like, all right, what else you got to tell me? Tell me another joke. Tell me another story that will entertain me so I'll keep coming back week by week. But that's not God's heart. God's heart for the church is to be really a training ground to be, be sent out. I mean, how would your sports teams here at Louisville High School be if you never had practice? I know there's a famous line by Allen Iverson where he's talking about practice. And I know that's taken out of context, but he says practice. You, you, you guys interviewing me are talking about practice, but look at how I perform in the game. Now, here's the reality. Allen Iverson, back in the day, he still practiced. Whether he did that with his team or by himself, he was still practicing. And the same is true with you as a Christian. You're called to live out your faith by practicing it so that other people might know Jesus. You're not just here to go sit in a church and soak, but instead to use the things you learn outside the walls of the church so that Sunday through Saturday, you're being a minister of the gospel. All right, 13 through 15, here's what I want you to see. In verses 13 through 15, it starts with the word until, and it says, until we attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. That section there, all the way to where it says, into the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body is joined. What I want you to see there is our goal is to work together. Growing stronger so we're built up to be like who? Jesus. Jesus. He's the head of the church. So you're going to come across a lot of lies about God and about the world. How do you fight those lies off? Prayer. Definitely prayer. Definitely prayer. But man, say I'm just exhausted and I got nothing left in the tank. By myself, I'm not enough for my, my, myself. You got a thought? Yeah. Through faith. Through faith. And, and how do we do that? Because on our own, again, we're going to get exhausted. You see where I'm going? You by yourself as a believer, even with the Holy Spirit, are going to get exhausted. And there's things you're not going to see. And there's people who God has put around you to point things out that are going on in your life. And you need them. That's why he wants you to be a part of a church. Because there's different gifts. Different people see different things in your life. And they can lovingly point you to Jesus. That's why he wants you to be a part of a church. So you can see those things. And here's the good news. If you're plugged into a church, you have other brothers and sisters in Christ who are doing that very thing. So hear me today. If you are tired of wanting to read your Bible, tired of trying to spend time in prayer, tired of listening to worship songs, you'd rather listen to something else. It may be because you're not as connected with other believers as God would want you to be. When you're connected to people in life and you have a common thing that you guys share, whether it's a sport you enjoy, um, a show you watch, a movie you've seen, what is the natural emotion that, that is, is drawn up inside of you? What is it? It's joy. Excitement. Think about that. Christmas time comes around. You get something you wanted. What do you do? You keep it to yourself? No, 
oh, you share it. You share it. You share it with others. When you have relationship with other people on a common thing, you're excited, you have joy, and you share it, and you grow in it. This is God's heart. The scriptures say, instead we'll grow, growing in every way into him who is the head into Christ, so that we ultimately become more like Jesus. Verse 16. Verse 16 starts uh, where it says, from whom. Y'all see that? From whom. I'm trying to find it. There we go. From whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body, what? Grow, so that it builds itself up in what? In love, in love. So what I want you to see there is that when there is unity amongst the church, the whole church grows stronger. By show of hands, who's ever been on a team or been in a classroom where there is disunity? Show of hands. Disunity. People have big heads. They think they can, you know, take the team by themselves, right? Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen it. And where does that lead? Definitely not to a lot of victories. Yeah. And you cause derision amongst the team or in the classroom, and you don't go the way you're supposed to go. And the same is true in the body of Christ, in the church. When there is conflict, when there is people who are uh, at each other's throats, you have conflict and it pushes people away. And Paul here, who writes this, is concerned about being unified, working together, being equipped so that the body of Christ builds itself up in love. Love. First John talks about Jesus in this way. In him, we see love. Not that we love, but that he first loved us. Jesus is love. And out of the overflow of his character, who he is, he loves us and sets that example as Christians to love others. You see, love is not just a practical thing. It's not just something you do because it's going to produce good results. There are plenty of people in your world that you talk to that love, but they don't receive love in return. Does that mean they should stop loving? No, oh, no. Christ is love. And even when love is not reciprocal, Christ loves anyway. Do you remember, do you remember what Jesus said on the cross when people were hurling, hurling insults at him? He said, Father, do what? Forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. Father, forgive them. That's love. Even when being opposed, Jesus loves, and that's the heart of a Christian, is to love. And all this is so that we might be equipped to do the work of ministry, as verse 12 up there talks about, so that we are building one another up in love. Let me close with a story here. When I was a freshman at Blinn College in Brenham, Texas, um, I promised my parents and my church that I would find a local church in Brenham. And days went to weeks, weeks went to months, and I didn't find a church home. It wasn't until maybe about three months later that I came back home that I attended church for the very first time since graduating from high school. It had been months where I had not been in a church at all. And here's what I noticed about myself. My desires to study were low. My desires to have meaningful relationships were low. And my desire, most of all, was low to spend time with God. And here's the other thing I noticed. My desire to drink and my desire to sin was high. A lot higher than my desire to do any of those other things. And that's where I was at. That was my freshman year in college. And God providentially used a dating relationship. And this girl challenged me. She actually called me out and said, you know what? You say you're a Christian, but you don't live like a Christian. And we started to study the Bible. And that relationship ended because we had, we came from different denominational backgrounds. It just wasn't going to work out. But here's what God did. God, through his word, me spending time personally with him, convicted me and called me into ministry. Mind you, I was already a Christian. But God showed me through his word who he truly is. God gives you the Bible not to force it on you, but instead he graciously gives it so that you might know who he is through his word. Think about it this way. If I stood up here and uh, I'm going to pick on Rihanna for a second. If I stood up here and told a bunch of stories about Rihanna that weren't true and I said, you know, she plays softball. And I'm, I'm, I'm being light with it here. Um, and that she actually doesn't go to school here. And all these other things. What do you think Rihanna would think about me? That I'm kind of crazy. 
or I'm just, I'm just weird, right? But here's the reality. How often do, they, do we do that with God? We don't go to the source. Instead, we make up things about God that are not true based on our experience or what somebody else has said. So here's my challenge to you. Get involved in a church. Get plugged into a church so people can love you, point you to truth, and help you walk in Christ. Can I pray for you guys?